Hello, everyone. This is your host, Deborah Poneman, and I'd like to welcome you to our call with today's guest, Hans Christian King. Hans, a true modern-day mystic, is a direct voice medium and metaphysics expert specializing in channeling and spirit communication. Hans and his ability to communicate with the spirit realm and work in partnership with his guidance has helped more than 50,000 clients in private readings over the last 50 years. Hans, who's appeared on ABC, NBC, CBS, PBS, as well as numerous radio shows and telesummits, is gifted with the rare ability to bridge the gap between the physical and the spiritual worlds. In fact, he literally walks in both realms. A very important part of his work is devoted to providing comfort to those who have lost loved ones as he brings them powerful and personal messages from the other side. Hans also teaches a wide range of classes, including an intensive series of intuitive development classes. And finally, one of his many unique gifts is his ability to let you know where you are on your soul's path, which helps you to make the clearest possible decisions for your future. And today you'll discover how to use the power of spirituality to manifest what you desire in your life, why abundance might not always look the way you expect it to look, and how to be aware of that which is, in fact, for you. You'll also learn the difference between abundance and manifestation. And finally, right on this call, Hans will share with us a technique anyone can use to work with spirit to receive abundance. And I'm definitely looking forward to that. So Hans, thank you for joining us today. Welcome to the call. Oh, thank you so much for having me, Deborah. I've looked forward to this, and I know we're going to have a good show. Well, with you, we know that whatever the weather is, it's going to turn sunny in our hearts. (laughs) Uh, What a nice thing to say. Thank you. And, and, well, before we begin, because I have a lot of questions, can you take a couple minutes and share what you believe to be the major turning points in your life that allowed you to manifest who you are and and all that you've contributed to people of the world. Well, thank you for asking. It's a little unusual for me in that I was born an intuitive medium. I didn't become one. I was actually born when I was three years old, four years old. I was telling neighbors things that came true. I was uh, knowing where the Christmas presents, I think you've heard me say this, where the Christmas presents were hidden. Not only did I know where they were hidden, I knew what was in them. And uh, I got a lot of fun poked at me. Oh, my, you're a spoiled sport. And later into life, I would go to the market with my mother and we had a supermarket chain named Ralph's in Los Angeles, I believe it's still there. And I would know what the total would be at the cash register every time every single time and they would the checkers and the bag boys and girls would take bets on i would get it and i always won so i began to understand it was probably something just a little bit different but i was born add and dyslexic which made early days pretty tough i used to think i was very stupid one day i was coming home from school and I had just had a report card with just D's, D minuses, C minuses. It it was a terrible report card. And I sat down on a bench and I can remember saying to Spirit, why me? Why is it that I appear so dumb? Why is it that I cannot absorb this or learn this? What What is different for me? And one of the people I had been talking to on the other side for many years, one of my guides came forward. He said, Hans, what we want you to know is it's unimportant what they want you to know. It is important, important what they want you to learn. What we want you to learn is what is important. We will teach you all that you need to know. That that you're studying with is, will be totally unimportant to you. We do not want that stuff in your head at this time. And once... I heard that I was okay. Once I realized, oh, I just learned it a different way. Then that was a major turning point for me. 
because I went from being a victim and perceiving myself not to be too bright. I actually had a teacher once say to me, you're the dumbest child I've ever taught and you'll never amount to anything. Well, that didn't quite work out that way. So it was important that I steadied myself and calmed myself and allowed spirit to unfold and, and bring the doors to me. Um, that, that, that was huge for me. Later in life, I had major turning points um, that brought me closer to spirit when they would diagnose, for instance, somebody with a, a disease that nobody had ever heard of in the States, come to find out they'd been in Brazil. And that, and, and when spirit gives the name of the, the, the illness in, in that language, that's pretty powerful. So I began to see, oh, I get it. That's my path. My path is to uh, bring light, to to manifest information for people. My life uh, has been extraordinary, I think is the only term I, I can use for it. I haven't done anything. Spirit's done it all. I'm just the mouthpiece for their truth. Well, one of the things I love about this story is that so many of our young people now – ADD, dyslexia, yeah, and yeah. feeling more than ever because I think so many more of the young people are being born right now with these greater intuitive and psychic abilities. One parent, for instance, says to me, you know, where my son was born ADD, and I said, oh, my God, what a blessing. And they look <laughs> at me like I've lost my mind. I said, well, you don't understand. My son was born, I said he was born with a gift. Because your son doesn't learn the way they want him to learn, it doesn't mean he's stupid. Yeah. You guys well, working together will find out. Ask Spirit. Show me the tools. I need to help my child to understand who they are. So I always look at ADD and, and arrested development and all this as actually a blessing for many children. Because there's an old adage in metaphysics that says that no two things can be in the same place at the same time. You see? So, given that, Spirit will get the information to the kids, you know, what they need to learn to sort of operate in this dimension, but they're really functioning on a different plane. Yes. Actually, my, my own son, every single year from the time he was in kindergarten, every teacher said, you have to put him on Ritalin. You have to put oh, him on God, Ritalin. No. Oh, no, <laughs> and no. I said, thank you, but no thanks, because he was just, not there, but what they did, what they chose to ignore was the fact that even though he never appeared to be paying any attention because he was off in a different realm, mm -hmm. he never got less than A's and perfect scores. Exactly because... what I'm saying. Thank you, Deborah. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. Because someone doesn't learn the way that we we you know we want them to learn, our education system is so flawed that it boggles the mind. We are busy pumping out. Millions of students every couple of years who have no jobs. Yes. Because we've told everybody they have to know the same thing in order to get a job. Well, our jobs have changed. And the things that they used to need, they don't need anymore. They need something new. And so if, if you have children that, that you perceive are suffering, point out to them how absolutely unique and incredible they really are. Teach them not to compare themselves to anyone or what anybody says just who they are. It's absolutely perfect for exactly where they are. Well, I think that you have just done a great service to all of the parents who are suffering along with their children only because they're trying to make them into something they're not or fit into Well, what society. we're doing is we're actually saying to our children, there's something the matter with you. Yeah. You're not the same. You're not as good as the other children because you have to take this medicine. And if you take this medicine, it will make you as good as the other children. What a hellacious thing to say to a child. Yeah. I would turn to that child and have done so and said, do you know that God doesn't love anyone more in this world than you? And I use that statement at the end of each radio show I do on Thursday night. God doesn't love anyone more in this world than you. Make them special. Make them unique. Make them curious about their journey. Then you begin to see results. Don't try to take a round peg and fit it into a square hole. You'll wind up shaving the edges. And when you shave the edges, you cheat the child. Wow. Thank you for this. I, 
I want to share one other thing with you. My son, who happens to be utterly brilliant, he didn't go to college because he thought that was like a waste of his time. Mm. And he actually dropped out of high school, even though he had this great brilliance. And everybody would say to me, how could you let him Mm -hmm. drop out? How could you let him not go to college? Pressure, pressure, pressure. And now his friends have graduated from college and they want to work for him. Yes, exactly. (laughs) Because what he knew was what they were trying to give him wouldn't work for him. He knew there was something, he, intuitively he knew that there was something better than what they were trying to teach him. Yes, exactly right. And and he educated himself. This is just so comforting to every parent's heart. Sometime we're going to do a whole show on parenting. One thing I want us to all remember God does not make mistakes. No child would ever be born less than. That is a human thing that we do. Each child is utterly unique unto itself. Each child is here with a dharma. They're not here by accident, Deborah. They're here by design. Right. Different dharmas offer different lessons to different people. Some people happen to be born into a family that has the appearance of having more money, but maybe less love. Some people are born into a family with very little money, but great abundance of love. Which would you rather raise your children in? Uh, The love. Yeah. Our children are assets of God. And our children are here to teach us, not the other way around. Because what we teach our children is what we were taught and what our parents before us, our grandparents, our great-grandparents, what society says. But I wonder if we ever turn to our children and say, and tell me what you're going to be doing. Who are you? Where did you come from? I'm so proud you chose me to be with. Tell me what you need from me so that I can make certain that I add to your wonderfulness. Then you see incredible children. And it sounds to me, young lady, that's kind of what you did. I tried my best. It must have been a little scary, though, okay? It must have been just a little scary. (laughs) Because, you know, you're flying with something you were never trained to deal with. Yeah. Either spiritually or medically. But we always perceive the children with this as something's wrong with them. What a terrible, terrible thing to do to a child. And especially those who do have ADD, who do have learning differences. I turn to those children and say, well, you know what it is. You learn in a different way. Perhaps you should be teaching other children how to learn better because you know how to learn. You just don't fit into that school room. You don't fit into that class. You have your own tools that you were born with. Isn't that wonderful? And helping them to understand, first of all, I think the most important thing, is to help them to understand that there's nothing wrong with them. That's the key. I grew up in the beginning thinking there was something radically wrong with me. I was called a witch. I was chased by kids in school who tried to beat me up, but I was six foot by the time I was 13, so that didn't work too well. (laughs) But uh, honoring your children by loving them, not for what they do, not for what grades they get, but the uniqueness of their soul. And I love, because we were going to, one of your points were why abundance might not always look like you expect it to, and you've already Mm -hmm. made that point. Like, we are programmed in this society that abundance is money, title, corner Mm -hmm. office, big house. One thing, Deborah, that what my guidance has always tried to teach people is that We actually come from abundance on our way back to abundance. We come out of the spiritual world. And because we come out of the spiritual world, we automatically are attached to abundance. Now, what can I do to assist this child on its journey? Because they're not your children. Just because you you gave birth to them, they really are children of God. You've agreed to babysit them for about 18 years and hope that what you... You impart the love that you impart and the message that you impart to them 
adds to the greatness of who they are and the greatness of who they are becoming. You want to try to help them to establish a strong foundation of love and trust in themselves and in the God force. So abundance, there's a room in your heart, in everybody's heart, and on the door it says, way to abundance. Because what has happened with human, the humankind is that we are trained now that we have to get a certain kind of job, just like you're talking about, Deborah, a certain kind of job, be raised in a certain community, have certain kinds of skills and all. Then, then if you work hard enough, you might uh, live an abundant means and all. What we teach you is you were abundant from the day you were born because you always were. God did not make a mistake when you were born. God does not send half-baked cookies to earth. Cookies are already baked. It's what we do with them that's important. And once you understand that, that you have a direct connection, in other words, the way to abundance in your heart is to remember that you're already connected to it. It's not something that you have to to, uh, uh, pray for. It's nothing you have to work hard for. It's nothing you have to to have great uh, pain to get. Abundance is already your right. You already are abundant. You've been talked out of it along the way. All you do is turn back to the abundance and you start saying, I am now available totally in my abundance for the abundance that I already am. And when you begin to do that, when you begin to set your intention, that's the key for everything for the spirit in human form is the quality of the intention. And so one of the things that we try to teach people is that everybody wants this pretty new house and they want to decorate the house and the boys want to put a roof on it and fireplace it and, and you know and you build a fence and all that house is of no value if you don't build a correct foundation because the big house will slip off in a good rainstorm. The rainstorm would be doubt or fear you have to have a strong foundation under you and so our teachings are about reminding you number one of who you are connecting you back to your abundant self and since we know that energy follows thought deborah when you connect back into your own abundance then everything that you would like the experience of it's much easier to get because you're already in the abundance. And so you just have to tell spirit, I think I'd like the abundance of this, or I'd like the abundance of that. And you're already connected, therefore it is. That's a hard concept to, to put in practice, but it works. People put themselves in the position, but they don't provide a space internally. They're looking for the abundance to come from out there. And earlier in the show today, we were talking a little bit about that. The power is out there. No, the power for abundance is internal, not external. And learning to be abundant in the moment of each moment. Not when I get this, I'll be abundant. Or when that happens, I'll... No, 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 no. Because I like to say every day that you wake up, five billion people, on not million, billion, five billion people on this planet would change places with you in a heartbeat. So all the lack of abundance you think you have, five billion people think you're an absolutely abundant person, you have a car, you have a roof over your head, you have clean food and water. So when you start to look at the abundance that you already are, everything then begins to change. Because once you open your heart up back to the abundance that you were born from, it's a melting. You can feel an internal melting and coming together. It's a blissful, warm, fuzzy type feeling. And this, and if people are thinking right now, I'd love to be able to do that. That's something that you teach. That's yes, something that you guide absolutely. people to be able to do. And it, and it works. It works hands down. Remember for every person out there, please, my friends, God, you are not a mistake. 
You are abundance itself in the eyes of God, in the eyes of spirit. Spirit never looks at the deeds that you do, ever. They only look at the intention behind the deed. You see? Anybody, I know a man who makes a million, two, a million, three a day, has for the last 25 years. Count it up. It's a huge sum of money. But his abundance comes from an internal place, believe it or not, not an external place. So he gives most of that money away. He creates projects, all kinds of things all over the world every day. So he's living his abundance. But here's the kicker. I said to him, so what if you didn't have the money? He said, I do it anyway. I find the money. Money is not why I'm doing the Money is not what I'm working for. Uh, so, you see? Yes. For instance, I live in Mexico half the year in Puerto Vallarta. And down there, doctors work to fix people. Doctors are not allowed to be corporations. Doctors work to help people here. Now, not all doctors, but medicine is big business in the United States. Very, very big business. Set your intention to make your individual life the repository of all the good you were born with. Looking at the internal integrity of yourself, that is pure abundance. Hugging yourself. That's abundance. Giving yourself little gifts, that's abundance. Every once in a while, I'll go into my my garden and I'll pick some roses, which are growing right next to my tomatoes. And I look at them and say, how did they do that? All I did was put them in the ground, but I told them I loved them, and I asked them if they would please do the best they could. And it's amazing. Once you actually connect with the abundance of the self, you are connecting with the abundance of spirit. You already have it. Your job is to get back into it. And everybody, Deborah, can do it. Nobody's exempt from that. And because that was the first question I was going to ask you, and you've already been answering it, and that is how do we use this power, the power of our own spirituality, to manifest? what we desire in our lives. I think you've already given us a lot of know answers. Know it, sweetheart. Know it. Know it. Have you ever read a book from anybody who was what we considered it famous, or a great teacher or in, in their autobiography? Did you ever hear one of those people say, and I always knew I would not make it? No. Every one of those people somewhere in the book or in the lecture will say, and I always knew it. That's the key. I always knew it. That is internal abundance in operation. I'll give you an example of that. I have a a dear friend who's quite ill, and I was visiting her, and I said, and what we need to do is just expect a miracle. And she said, well, you could expect a miracle. It's a little hard for me to expect a miracle. And it broke my heart because, of course it, oh, well. When my father was dying of cancer, he was told that he had one of the worst cancers and that he had about three months to live. And, he, and I'd been taking him around to various doctors around the country. And they all said to the doctor, he's got about three months to live. And finally, we were at doctor's hospital in Miami. And there was a young doctor. And he said, he says, Mr. King, why is it that you refuse to accept that you're dying of cancer? He says, because I'm not. And he says, well, Mr. King, you know the first step in cancer is denial. He says, oh, I don't deny my body has cancer, sir. I said to you, I don't have cancer. The cancer came to visit my body, not who I am. Now, if you were to ask me my intention, my intention is to return to Mexico with my son and live for another five years and have fun. He lived five years to the month of that doctor's visit and never saw another doctor. So that is the power of intention. So he knew that the abundance of who he was 
would honor his request. I try to explain to people, try very hard not to buy into what doctors, I love doctors, that's the truth. I've got one of the greatest doctors I love her to pieces. But when I was told some time ago that I would probably be, be dead within the year, I had an incurable heart condition and that I needed to go home and literally get my estate in order. And at the time, I was about 42. And I said, well, you know, I thank you for this. And they had me in cardiac intensive care and tubes and wires and gosh knows what else. And I was all doped up. And I, suddenly one of my guides appeared to me and says, Hansi, are you tired of this yet? I thought, what a rude thing to say. I said, what are you talking about? I didn't make it. He said, are you tired of this? I said, yes, sir. He said, oh, son, for heaven's sake, let go of it and go home. You're fine. I was discharged from the hospital three days later. I never returned to see another doctor again for 12 years, and that was 36 years ago. The wow. illness came to visit my body, not who I was. So if you could talk to your friend about separating herself from what she's being told she has, and tell her not to buy into it. It may not stop her from passing over. We're all going to pass over. Depends on when. Some go earlier than others. But that that is so beautiful. And now that you've already given great comfort to parents and to people who have as I've heard it called health opportunities. Yes. I have another question and that is one of the topics that I know that you cover so eloquently is not only why abundance might not always look like you expect it to but how to be aware of that which is for you because sometimes we think something is for us and it doesn't turn out to be or yeah. we're we're in a quandary because we don't know it is learning to differentiate between what the mind chatter tells you and what the heart mind tells you. For instance, let's just run this scenario. Let's say you meet somebody, boy, girl, doesn't matter, whoever it is. And in a moment of meeting that person, you feel a click, some kind of a click. And you say, oh, I think this may be the soulmate I'm looking for. And you head for that relationship. And in the beginning, there are some similarities between the two of you, and you have a good feeling about this. Your mind chatter is telling you that's the one. But your heart is being overridden. You don't know what the heart is thinking. And so you go blindly along rather than saying to the heart, is this really the soulmate I've been looking for? You have to learn to listen to the heart, not to the mind. The mind will quickly jump in and say, oh, yes, this is the person. But spirit will always give you a little bit of an indication that perhaps this may not be the person. Perhaps this is some soul-crossing uh, relationship from a previous lifetime. And I've seen more people marry people in a soul-crossing relationship than I can thousands of people when they knew inside of themselves, well, it may not be the right person, but it's the person I've got. You have to learn to hear the spirit that connects through abundance to the great spirit. And that is what we teach people. And then, in that process, we then teach them how to manifest the levels of abundance. But first, we teach them how to recognize the abundance that they already are and the abundance that they already have. I did a, a thing for PBS a couple of years ago. And it was called You Are Enough, Deborah. I don't know whether you've had a chance to listen to it or not. But in You Are Enough, it says, what if you woke up tomorrow morning and you found out there was no place you needed to go, nothing you needed to do, no one you needed to call, nothing you needed to create, but just in that moment, you were enough for God. No struggle anymore. No tears. No despair. Who you are in that moment is enough. And 
it has really shaken thousands of people because they never had that concept. Because when you are in abundance, you know that you already are enough, that nothing you're going to do is ever going to make you better than who you already are. You are abundance itself because you came from abundance. You see? As we continue to have the guidance of your work, that will be more of a spontaneous reality that will begin to wake up knowing that we are enough and there's nothing yeah. we need to do or be or handle no. or perform. Or... You couldn't say it better. And here's the kicker for everybody who's listening. Spirit already knows by listening to your heart what you want the experience of. And when you turn loose of the way you think it needs to look, when you turn loose of the way you think it has to be, surprise, and it doesn't always look like you thought it was going to look. Right. You see, our want is our mind shatter. Our need, our perception of need, is what we came here to develop. It's our dharma. And spirit will always present the dharma to us. Always. But we promised our listeners is that you would share with us a technique that anyone can use to work with spirit to receive what they need or to receive the abundance in their lives? I'll be happy to. It hinges a little bit on what we've already been speaking about. I believe the single most destructive force in the universe is human mind chatter. Pure and simple. The mind never tells us how beautiful we are every morning. It doesn't tell us how kind we are, that our body's perfect. We have no fears doesn't say that. Every morning our body, our mind fills it with fear about something. You can sit down and you can say to spirit, from this day forward I choose only to live my abundant life. I will no longer give power to mind chatter. I will do whatever is necessary to quiet and then eliminate my mind chatter. I am building a room now in my heart for that abundant soul I already am that I have lost because I know it's there and I'm going to build a new house for it. I'm going to make myself available for the abundance that spirit feels I need to experience. Not what I want, but what the spirit feels I should experience. So you literally surrender all the needs, the wants, the desires, and you give them to the great spirit. You give it back to the spirit. Now, your mind chatter will be very unhappy you've just done that because it will tell you that you can't trust in dreams. You can't trust in abundance. You can't trust in anything but the power it gives you. Now, someone asked me the day how long process this is. It is a form of, of redesigning your mind. It's mind um, Mind change, you know, brainwashing. That's what it is, because you've already been brainwashed the other way. Lack of abundance. Now you need to brainwash yourself back to where you started from, which was perfect abundance. So by denying the mind the power to interfere with your state of abundance, which is what it's currently doing, you send a message and a signal to spirit. It's called your intention. And with Spirit, everything is in the intention. I point out again, they never care about the deed. They only care about the intention. Mm -hmm. So that once you set the intention to allow spirit to work with you, to manifest your dharma, they already know what you want the experience of. You've been running it through your mind shatter for years. They're not deaf. They hear you. So once you get that you can work with them, there's this great sense of joy and relief. I received an email from a, a client of mine. She said, you know, you taught me that technique. She said, Hans, when I did that, the house that I needed for my children and I suddenly appeared. We, we couldn't pass the credit because of the divorce. She said, everything in our lives changed. A man that I knew from 20 years ago offered me a very, very nice job near my new place to live. And, and it, it it was there all the time, 
but I didn't know how to see it and how to work with it. So what do we do is to teach you how to build a bridge back to your abundant self. But first to do that, you have to understand that your mind chatter will go to war with you, literally trying to change your intention. Be powerful, be strong, and don't let that happen. And once you get the technique down and the the products that we're offering today, it's, it's just a tremendous amount of product. Teaches you step after step. Every question that you might ask, there is a product that we have up for you today that actually addresses that very thing. It's probably the largest offer I have ever done. To access this package for yourself, just click on the special offer button on this web page. So now, please go ahead and tell everyone what they'll find um, here. Um, we put a series of products together. I can't even tell you there's so many of them. But they are the history of the teachings that Spirit has done over the last several years about how to manifest, how to live in manifestation, how to quell the mind chatter, what techniques to use. That, that much uh, information is in there. Spirit's very, very pleased with the information. And it helps people that no matter what level you are in your belief system, no matter what level you are in your doubt system, this opens the doors absolutely and completely to helping you to move quickly. And I'm not talking about months and years and all this. No, no, no. no. Because once it clicks, once that clicks, and that's what these products are about, when the click changes, your perception changes. And when the perception of abundance changes, you are automatically at that point connected to your true abundant source. So abundance is not things. It's not getting things. Abundance is returning to your abundant self so that the things you would like to get automatically arrive. Understood. So what in your package, what you have are specific, it's specific knowledge and specific exercises that help us perhaps quell the mind chatter? Absolutely. That is our biggest enemy. If anyone in your audience wants to be afraid of anything, be afraid of their own mind chatter. It is the one thing in their life, in all of our lives, that can stop you from abundance. It is the only thing that I know of that can stop you in your abundance. And then also ways to connect to the power of spirit. Yes. See, most people don't realize that they have a partner in spirit. In the Bible it says, and God will send his angels to take charge over thee. Well, angel, it means messenger, or bearer of information from the Greek Bible. And it means that God has sent his angels to help us. Angels, guides, helpers, friends. We are not alone. And somebody asked me what I wanted someone to say about me when I was gone. But I tried to teach them they weren't alone. The Spirit hears our thoughts, sees our soul, has no judgment, loves us unconditionally, cries when we cry, laughs when we laugh. They're there for us, so we're not alone. And that's what these products will teach us. So, um, because I know that you've had, obviously, you have direct communication with your spirit guides. And I assume that when we continue to use the product that you offer, that we'll feel, we might not be able to talk to them as directly as you do, but we'll definitely feel their increasing presence. Oh my goodness. Uh, Absolutely. Absolutely. You can feel the hand on your shoulder. You can feel the hand on your back. You can literally feel a sense of release and peace as you work with spirit in eliminating the mind chatter. Because the old adage again is that no two things can be in the same place at the same time. Okay? So as you loosen the control that the mind chatter has had over you for so long, then the spirit's energy rises up within you and you can literally feel the connection. You can literally feel the difference. Mm. And hear the guidance. Yeah. The biggest problem with everyone is as you start to work with the products, watch I literally mean watch out for. 
watch out for the mind chatter because it is determined that it not lose power. Wow. Hmm. And I know that there are a lot of specific specific guidance and specific tools and techniques that you offer in your product that actually help those people who are struggling. Like, for example, one of the things that you teach is how to differentiate between what is a soulmate relationship and... Because in the beginning, Deborah, in the beginning, they look the same. They feel the same. This is why I try to say don't hop in bed and fall in love with the first person who comes along because they're what you have at the moment. Wait a little bit. Let the spirit bring the manifestation of the love that you're looking for. Because oftentimes we confuse soulmate friends with soulmate lovers. And we teach you how to learn the vibrational difference, how to actually know the difference. It's it's a fascinating thing. Once people get connected to it, they never get off it because it's a, what is it, my friend Alfred said, it's a natural high. And the same goes for when we veer off the path that we were meant to follow on this lifetime, that you teach ways to recognize the symptoms that tell you that you're off your path. Yes. Wow. That's, yeah. so, can you give us, can you share with us maybe one symptom that we, and I know that it's the mind chatter, and, and is there something else specific that you can share with us that we might be able to look for to determine if we're off our path or on our path? Ask yourself this question. Are you enough for you right now? Are you enough for God? If you get any Static. any questioning, any doubt, you're off your path. Because Spirit will teach us that we are the greatest person we will ever meet. We are our own best friend. We will spend more time with ourselves than with any other person. We have the ability to do more harm or more goodness to ourselves than any other person or situation. So when you ask yourself, am I enough for me? Am I complete for me? If you can't say yes, then you're off your track. If you're waiting for something to happen that will make you better than you already are, you are off your track. Because again, I point out, just in this moment, you are already enough for God. God has no expectation of you, only you do. You are already enough for God. And that is a concept that the mind chatter does not take in easily because the mind chatter wants to remind you that your boss may like your coworker better. Maybe they're scheming to get rid of you. Maybe your husband is sleeping around and presents all of these outrageous and outlandish fears to you. God would never do that to you. Spirit would never give you that. You're off track. And when you get on track, everything just goes smoothly. Just smoothly. And that, dear Deborah, is how you tell the difference. Wow. Well, I absolutely know why Dr. Michael Beckwith says that you have the capacity to take us to places within ourselves that we've never been. And that's a quote from Dr. Beckwith, and I know we're all experiencing that right now. Wow. And um, You know, and I, I would say real quickly to, to all of your beautiful people, yes, you can. No, you're not forgotten. And God doesn't love anyone more than you, and you are relevant. You are abundance itself in human form. Remember always, we're just baby angels having a human experience. I think your show proves that you're an angel to be able to do the kind of work that you do Deborah to bring enlightenment to people is is the coin of spirit so I need to congratulate you on wonderful work that you do well thank you so much and of course it's my honor because I get to bring people like you 
to the world. I know that, as we said earlier, you've been on NBC and CBS and PBS and and 50,000 clients around the world. So in the meantime, those are 56,000 very fortunate people. And I really sincerely hope that uh, my listeners take advantage of the special offer that you've created for us because I just can't even imagine that it is not going to completely shift people's lives in exactly the direction that we all want to go. And that is to be able to hear spirit, the voice of spirit, to feel spirit working through us, to know that we are in fact abundant and we were born abundant, everything that you've said, and that it's the quality of our intention, not so much our action, but the intention, everything that you teach, it we all feel it in our hearts so intuitively and sometimes we feel that we go off our path and that's why I'm so excited about this product because I absolutely know that it's the knowledge that we need to take the next step in our uh, evolution and our growth on this planet. So thank you for putting that together for everybody. It's, I, it's, been, it's been my privilege, believe me. So you are going to love this package, and all you have to do is just click on the special offer button that's on the web page, and you'll find all the information there. I really, really hope you do. You're going to love it. And really, I'm looking at it. I really cannot believe how much you've put into this. To this, a lot of uh, stuff there. It, it is. We are so, so very, very lucky. And I just had a, a question just popped into my Please. head. And that is, I have, I'm looking at gazillion uh, testimonials of people who have so greatly benefited from your work. Can you share with us just a few two, three turnarounds, amazing turnarounds that you've seen, your favorite ones from people who have applied what you teach? Well, this one is kind of heavy, but I I really enjoy it. I have an office in North Miami Beach for many years, and actually I still have it. And this couple came to see me, and as they're sitting there, I heard my guidance say, they have a pact to commit suicide. They've lost their child. And I thought, well, boy, how do I get around this one for these nice people? And what had happened, they had been trying to have a child for 14 years. And it just didn't work. It just did not work for no medical, nothing, in virtual, virtual, nothing. But she got pregnant. And they named the little girl inside of her because they found out it was a girl. They named her. Sarah, and in a little while, the child left the womb and went back to spirit. These people had tried for so hard and were so desperate that they literally said, it just isn't worth going on anymore. And so they had a suicide pact, literally. So as they sat there, the spirit said through me, children, a suicide pact is not the way to go. Remember that Sarah loves you and that in time you'll understand why she went home. When we said that, they were startled and they said to me, how did you know we named her Sarah? I said, I didn't. Sarah did. And Sarah is now telling me that there is a child coming and this child will come through full term, but it's not Sarah. Anyway, they agreed that if the consciousness of their child had survived, they would not do what they said they were going to do. A year later, she gave birth to a little girl, which they named Emmy. That's the power of spirit, and that's what they can do. And we do this every day. There are so many instances where spirit has come through. I remember one when the parents lost a child in the Brazilian rainforest. And Spirit says the child is being well taken care of. The child was actually kidnapped. Went down on some ecological tour. The child was kidnapped. It was about 18 or 19. Spirit, oh, no, the child will be fine. The authorities said, no, the child is dead. Well, 
The spirit said, you will hear from this child shortly. He is not dead. He is fine. And how do you tell parents who have gotten themselves into believing they've lost their child that there's hope? They look at you like you're a mean person, you know. Why would you give them hope? Anyway, the child appeared in a canoe with some gentleman from a tribe, and he was fine. And he said, I never had any fear. I felt like I had an angel on my shoulder. This is the work of the Spirit. This is what they can do for us. We don't ask Spirit to save a relationship. We don't ask Spirit to make us millionaires. We ask Spirit to help us to lead our abundant self. That's what they do. I just have goosebumps throughout my whole body. I, I'm kind of speechless right now, which is rare. Welcome to my world. Every once in a while I get tongue-tied, but, you know, because I'm a direct voice medium, it means that I give information from the Spirit as they speak it. That's called a direct voice medium. So I don't listen and speak it. I speak it as it is given to me. Yes. One of the things they always taught me, they said, Hansi, remember always the truth is simplicity itself. Don't complicate it, truth. Well... The last thing I'm going to say is because we all come from abundance, we deserve some final words of wisdom from you. I think the wisdom that I would give to everyone is what I had mentioned earlier. Shift your perception into the light. Know that you are not alone. Know that spirit hears you. Let go of the struggle of trying to acquire and simply say to Spirit, I would like the experience of the following, please. I now am in my abundant heart. That's all you have to say to recognize that you're not alone, that they're there for you, that they're walking with you. No one can be alone. It is utterly spiritually impossible. Knowing that you have a hand to hold, always. And they do hear your, your desires. They hear the appearance of your needs. Again, make yourself the vessel that they can fill. That's what's spiritually important for each and every soul. Well, thank you so much for being with us today, Hans. This has been beyond extraordinary and I just thank you on behalf of everyone who's listening from the bottom of our hearts it's been an honor to work with you and your wonderful people and my fondest prayer and fondest wish from spirit is that they helped make a little difference in people's lives today well, thank you and thank you to everyone for spending this time with me and with Hans Christian King. And I look forward to when we are all together again and to you living your life without limits. This is Deborah Poneman. Have a blessed rest of your day.